online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Oh, you guys, I love this song. Same, yeah. it's great. Except we're, well, we got like the intro though, so it's just real chill. Keeping it dramatic mm -hmm. for a dramatic episode, you know? Oh, here we go, here we go. Mm -hmm. We got some more, got some more Kendrick. If you guys don't know Kendrick Lamar, go ahead and check him out. Look at his Grammy performance, mm -hmm. it was amazing. But anyways, you're not here for a Kendrick Lamar after show, you're here for the Grinder after show. My name is Leslie Ambrose. Today we're covering the episode Delusions of the Grinder. I've got my <laughs> awesome co host here, but before I introduce them, you can find me on Twitter at In Less Than No Time. And hey guys, want to introduce yourselves to the lovely people of the internet? Well, hey guys, I am Lucretia Lyon, and because that name's so funny, as long as you can spell it right, uh, L A C R E T I A L Y O N, you can find me anywhere on the internet because there's only one. I always get jealous when I sit next to Lucretia. I'm like, oh, she's got the most fucking fabulous name on earth. And then we've got like, Daniel. Like, oh, great. It's but my you get, real name. Oh, jealous. <laughs> but you can find Daniel, I guess, on Instagram <laughs> at Dan Babic and then at Twitter at Dan Babic with an underscore. And just quickly, like, I was so excited when we were like mm -hmm. dancing then because, like, I started clicking into the microphone and it sounds. Mm. So really cool. cool, just real jazzy. Amazing. But you do have the. Have you seen that meme, the Dan Daniel? No. Have you seen it? What's that? Yeah. Okay, it's basically going off topic for a second. It's basically this guy recorded his friend walking around in his vans, and his, the whole time he's like, "Damn, Daniel, mm. damn." Oh. I feel like that would. Fit I'm famous, guys. Hilarious. Yeah. Do with that. But anyways, what did you guys think of this? We have a two-part episode today. We still have Maya Rudolph here. We've got the Lucas, well, one of the Lucas brothers guest starring. We still haven't figured out which one, but we'll kind of touch <laughs> yeah. on that later. Yeah. But Stu was super crazy this one like he's usually going over the edge usually we're like oh haha ha, Stu's an idiot he's crazy he's like super high strung but this time it was done like he's gone over the edge he's super paranoid we all have that super paranoid friend that doesn't shut up with conspiracy theories and stuff so what I, did you guys I watch the X-Files yeah. so that's me <laughs> <laughs> so what did you guys think of the episode about Stu Mm -hmm. I honestly love that Stu is the one that they're looking at and being like, dude, you're just being dramatic. And since, you know, the, obviously the grinder is always dramatic. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think Stu is on to something. I don't think it's just his paranoia and, you know, them always just missing him. That's why I hope that in the next episode it shows that Stu was right. But you know they'll never give him the credit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stu's the crazy guy in, like, yeah. all those, like, um, what are they called? The, the, those dystopian films where mm -hmm. he's like, oh, the world's going to end, the world's going to end. And it's like, Shut up, you're stupid, and then the world ends, and they're like, Oh, the oh, crazy you're not guy so stupid. Was there. He's yeah. chicken little. Uh -huh. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Brings me into my bloody personal life when I was telling everyone for years, don't drink the milk. And now, mm -hmm. all, now all of a sudden everybody's, you know, all about the no milk vibes and doing the almond mm -hmm. milk and all uh -huh. of that. And I'm like, see if I can told you people. <laughs> but you were trendy before everybody exactly. else Exactly. So I'm believing. But I love seeing that they're all a bit crazy town. Because I think everyone is a bit crazy in their own mm -hmm. way. I remember even last week we were talking and uh, everyone was like, oh, everyone was kind of talking about how they're mm -hmm. a hot mess. So you weren't here last week, girl. <laughs> but we are talking and you're like, you look at people and you think, oh, they're so together on the outside. But even the most together person's a hot mess because... Because they were human. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're all a hot mess outside just before we come on in here, you know? Totally, like, yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you know, you look at your we eyebrows. Pull it together. And oh, you look this at your is hair. a lot of work. Mm -hmm. a lot of work. <laughs> this is a hot yeah. mess in itself. But forget about my eyebrows. Jillian, I no. think she's sketchy. She I mean, we talked a little bit about it last week. She's sketchy, one, for the reason that. She's supposed to lose her license for sleeping with her client. Like, yeah, that's, that's not a, big a thing. No, no. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Can you do that, though? Is that legal? No, it's not legal. Yeah. Oh, really? Like, you do actually. Like, they made a joke about it, how you swear. Like, oh, did she take some oath? Yeah, she, she did, did take an oath. <laughs> like, she probably signed, like, a contract that you're not supposed to get emotionally involved with your client. You're supposed to, you know, leave that space open. There's people that have quit their jobs, like, in history, to end up marrying somebody that they fell in love with, that they were... Um, there, what's the word? Psychoanalyzing? Yeah. They were psychoanalyzing. Oh. So the fact that she's just going about this nonchalant, like throwing it around, I don't know why Stu or somebody in the attorney, 
and the attorney office hasn't brought it up. Well, Stu has brought it up several mm-hmm. times that she can't do this. It is illegal. But he's not like no, pressing, pressing it charges too hard. or like making it like, hey, maybe we should actually, as lawyers, dive into this. So yeah. I have, I mean, I have a, go ahead, go ahead, what you're going to say. Oh, uh, I was just going to say, and I think it's because Stu is like so insecure is why he's not going to do it because mm-hmm. he's still like, you know, he has the fantasy of what he's in Dean's suit pocket. And I think that's why he doesn't pursue it because, yeah, I mean, he's so insecure. But yeah, I mean, everyone else just looks at it like nothing's wrong with it. And it's like anybody who knows anything about therapy knows you can't date your patients. Mm-hmm. What was that line that Lizzie and Ethan that there's no gray zone in love? Love, yes. Like, no, <laughs> no. No, there's clearly a gray zone here and she's definitely <laughs> crossed it. But do you think the show would get that deep? Because I think obviously in real life everyone would be like, this is not, you know, they, they would they would look in, like more would happen mm-hmm. with yeah. more repercussions. But because it is a comedy and, and because it's like a natural comedy, but obviously the jokes they make are not what people would say in everyday yeah. life. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's just going to be part of the show. But I like it, but so my, my sp- conspiracy was is because they're they're battling it out with the grandfathered, you know, the mm-hmm. show at the same time, the Stamos, and they had to go out with the bang. So they bring in a big name like that who is very funny mm-hmm. and I could actually see on the episode for, you know, like forever type thing she could be that therapist type character but oh, the only thing I think it's missing and I actually say this about grandfather because I do mm. the after show as well uh-huh. and maybe it's just because I like a bit more depth is I'd love for it to go a little bit like 45 minutes so then we can have I love the funny but I, I, I want that contrasted with the in-depth moments okay. and we do get them but in, mm. in 28 minutes or whatever how long it goes for you can't get fully in-depth so I'd, mm-hmm. I'd like more of that contrast contrast maybe like a one hour yeah like a one hour episode because it does that, the that way it's line. shot uh-huh. does remind me of brothers and sisters not just because mm-hmm. Robert Lowe is in it but it does have the of a, 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 a Similar because of the family di- dynamic and the way he shot vibe. Mm-hmm. And speaking of brothers and sisters, Rob Lowe's brother, Chad Lowe, actually directed this episode. Mm-hmm. You want to mm-hmm. tell us who Chad is and what he's what uh, yeah. people I know him for? Yeah, most people probably know Chad Lowe on Pretty Little Liars. He is um, Aria's dad, uh, but he also directs episodes of that as well as Bones. So, you know, he's been around in the acting world, but does mm-hmm. a lot of directing as well. I wonder if he'll ever switch from being behind the camera to actually coming on and being maybe some character from Dean's past. Yeah, know? to me, he should play his brother on the grinder. Like, I think that would be really funny. And I'm uh-huh. sure they'll work that out eventually. Oh, they work yeah. everything in, <laughs> yeah. so I'm pretty sure that would come. But I kind of have, I mean, it's a little early for predictions, but mm. I'll have a better one when we actually get to the prediction time. Mm. But I think that Jillian and Corey mm. might actually be working together because she didn't come upon until we got this case with the grandpa. Uh, yeah, I uh-huh. agree. I thought that as well, especially because she's the one calling Stu crazy mm-hmm. for um, g- pursuing this. So she's the one stopping him. And to me, it's just like, is she even really a therapist at yeah. this point? Like, who is she? Like, maybe she yeah. was like stalking them beforehand and like knew that Dean always got the case because of how dramatic he was. So now suddenly she's like, oh, hey, get rid of everything from your past. Get rid of the grinder yeah. and making that go away. So then now Stu's being the dramatic one, (laughs) Dean's being the sensible one, and then we just see this completely blow up, and I don't know if it's going to, if Dean's going to come to his senses, maybe, Uh, switch out of it, all of a sudden Jillian's going to be crazy, which is sad, Uh because Dean won't have his love interest, which Uh we've been waiting for, you Because isn't it funny, like, I haven't even seen it in real life, when someone's like, calm down calm down like why are you so angry it gets you more angry oh, yeah. so it's the same thing when someone's like you're crazy you're like I'm not crazy because like obviously everyone's a little bit crazy because we're, we're people but he's not crazy in a sense that no, like no. he's mentally insane he's just the normal type of crazy but like when people accuse you of something because you don't want like he comes across crazy by denying he's crazy mm-hmm. hmm. I don't even know how I'd word that even more but mm-hmm. I'm just like Ooh, smart no I think girl. you got it perfectly because mm-hmm. I mean eventually Stu's going to reach that boiling point of he's kind of there already but he's going to reach to where it's going to turn around, I think, and then we'll see some redemption from that. Yeah, but I reckon, mm-hmm. I reckon she's definitely a fraudulent bitch, for sure. <laughs> I hate, I, some, fraudulent bitch. Some, some, uh-huh. some owners like to get personal. I always get personal, so oh, I don't give a go fuck. Go for it. I was, you know how, because I, I was almost, like, so, not late for the show, but just as we were going live to air, you saw me on my laptop. Uh-huh. And the reason is because I'm planning this event for work um, mm-hmm. on Saturday, and because we employed an event planner who was fraudulent. Like massively fraudulent and pretended mm-hmm. to do all these things. So I'm all about the fraudulent vibes. I'm like, mm-hmm. if this can happen in my life, it can happen on the grinder as and well. Definitely on the grinder. Yes, I reckon she's a fraudulent, fraudulent, fraudulent. Mm-hmm. I feel like your life is probably as dramatic as the grinder. <laughs> I would say yeah. it's more dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! But I just don't. I don't know if I want to see as much as I see the storyline mm-hmm. happening. I don't know if I want to see Jillian turn out to be this horrible person. 
I mean, to be honest, she already seems like it. I mean, she's sleeping with her patient, uh-huh. even if she's not a real therapist. So and she's still, not like, ethical. She can yeah. still bounce back. And yeah. to me, the way she talks to Stu and Dean, like, and wanting him to erase the grinder, I mean, in theory, a therapist probably really would say that, but this really extreme way of erasing it is just like, no one would ever have him do that. But I did love his DVD player. Oh my gosh, at the beginning. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then she's like, you could have just smashed the with, DVD. With the little reference of, yeah. okay, Dean's dramatic, the grinder yes. days are over, and the grinder on the show is actually dead. Yes. What, was he a, a Mexican busboy? Yes. Which I have to say, his, Mex- his, his Mexican, his Spanish <laughs> was not that bad. Yes, it was, cool. it was adorable. Uh-huh. And I really like that Dennis Haysbert made a cameo as the guy, like, putting him in witness protection or whatever, who mm-hmm. was the pres- president on 24. He does the Allstate commercials. Oh, He's just okay. so, you know, such a recognizable person. Mm-hmm. And to play in, like, a funny cameo like that was really interesting. Look at you coming in with the I know. Show she just, I love she's it. so mm-hmm. smart. I'm no, the beach the awesome. yeah. She's like, oh, I've seen this guy already on yeah. this show and that show. I've got y'all covered. Love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I got me thinking when he was watching his... It would be very... You know, we always say it would be so hard to mm-hmm. let go of it all because I wouldn't cope. Like, looking mm-hmm. at how fabulous I was before and now I'm like... But I think his life's actually, in a sense it's getting better now because he's surrounded by so much family and love Mm -hmm. like even though he had this amazing career and all this success and this outpour of love from you know everyone around him it wasn't as deep or it wasn't as real as oh my god I always have my deep moment in you the were, grinder. You were killing it, yeah. Oh my god, he, I am smart. No, but like this, it was you know that doesn't even compare to the magnitude and the love that he has from his family. Mm-hmm. So I like that. That I think his life is actually more rich, um, better off living the life he's living now than when it was when he was the grinder. I know he's struggling, but I think that's he'll come to that realization in the in the end of the series or whenever at some point he's going to come to the realization that hey, this is the most important and best part of my life, not me on a TV mm. show. Or not the, like, classic. It's a good twist to, like, mm. yeah. telling. Like, mm. I feel like it's a Rob Lowe's, now that you said that, like, Rob Lowe's yeah. personal message to Hollywood, like, hey, this isn't everything. It isn't, yeah. Family is. Which he has his own family, so I would assume. And he said, he said that as well that, before. Yeah. People have, like, like, he said that before in interviews, like, how he, that that's the most important thing to him, his family and all of his fame and all of his success means nothing to the time he just spends with his boys surfing on the beach. Mm-hmm. And that's even, like, I've noticed, with, I'm not sure about you girls in your career, um, with the hosting and stuff, like, I have interviewed some of the biggest celebrities in the world. I've been to the, some of the biggest events. But, um, and that's great. But what sticks out to me in my life and the greatest memories are the ones that I've shared with my family. Oh, definitely. Yeah, your family. Yeah. You're, you're, like, close friends that you have and that you're able to laugh with and share those memories with. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what's interesting is Rob Lowe's family is actually a lot of the inspiration for this show oh, because, we, um, he, you know, oh, his relationship it, with Chad uh-huh. is very similar. I mean, like, he's talked about it. His relationship with Chad is kind of like this with Stu, um, and then his father is really a lawyer. So oh he God, obviously yeah. gets some real good legal advice. <laughs> he's getting the actual straight legal advice, not like Corey mm-hmm. be hiding in the back alley getting yeah. the flash drive, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know anything about that with the father being a lawyer. Or anything. Yeah. And I, if I mentioned it before, I guess oh, I didn't know. Oh, but yeah. yeah. No, you're yeah. coming in I know, straight random with the facts, experts. Yeah. The what news. else can you just tell Who us you, quickly? Lucretia? Uh, well, I guess in regards to the show, what's interesting is Fred Savage as well. You know, his brother is Ben Savage, mm-hmm. and they were both actors, so I'm sure that that, you know, really plays into it, because, you know, Fred did The Wonder Years, Ben did um, Boy Meets World. So, yeah, this whole brothers brothers and sisters, like you brought it up with Rob Lowe, is really a lot of what this show's about, yeah. and these people have these real connections, you know, in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of seems like a, like a nice break for everyone in Hollywood that's doing their own shows, that knows Rob, that knows Fred. Yeah. That this is like their, hey, I'm just going to go be on this show for fun and go hang out with my friends and just do something, like some good quality comedy. Yeah, because Rob mm-hmm. Lowe always wanted to do comedy, but I, I think it's really funny because he even admitted, he goes, I felt like I was too pretty. Everybody told me I was too pretty. And, you know, they keep putting me in these like Hallmark type movies, but I wanted to do comedy. And he really only got that chance after like Wayne's World, like 20 years later, he does uh, Parks and Rec. So, yeah, well, and then that's what opened him this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he killed it. I mean, I say that every yeah. week, but he killed it in Parks and Rec. Like, I, I, I was watching Chris it Trigger. earlier today, and I was like, yes, I love crazy, like, mm-hmm. over-the-top Rob Lowe, you know? Yeah. I will have a glass of water. I will have two ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how we do it. Yeah. Every yes. uh-huh. But he probably likes it, because, you know, everyone is so obsessed with what he looks yeah. like. Even us, we're all like, yeah. like uh, we can't stop talking about how good he looks. I know with Stamos <laughs> in his show, but like, oh my God. Uh-huh. But he's, because Stamos isn't that funny in his show, whereas he's so funny that you forget 
about the way he looks. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, what a nice break that he's just like, oh my God, if people aren't like, mm. I mean, I'd probably love it. Pretty Everyone, people struggle too. People struggle, yes. yeah, people, pretty people struggles. I'm just so uh -huh. over everybody telling me I'm so hot. I want people to think I'm funny. That's his problem, but yeah. you do, because he is so talented. Ooh, mm -hmm. just gave you a bit of a noxy because oh. of like <laughs> flammy hands going over the top, getting into it. But yeah, so nice to him. You can just kind of focus uh -huh. on his talent rather than just what he looks like. Yeah, yeah. kind of switching over real quick, because you said that John Stamos isn't that funny. So do you think grandfathered maybe might get the boot for the next season and we'll see the grinder come up because of how awesome their guest stars are what's kind of your insider information well, it's, it's funny because um the insider information i'm getting is the grandfathered numbers are stronger oh wait they oh, are stronger really? yeah yeah um they're definitely stronger but not by a lot but per personal preference mm -hmm. what, like the grinder 100 percent is that it, more like it gets you laughing more than the other? Yeah, and I think it's uh -huh. just got that little bit more... It's natural. Like, I think cause Rob Lowe, I feel like he's almost meant to play a comedic actor. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind like of he what, wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like finally the, got it. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, meant to do he it. just uh -huh. happens to be extremely good looking. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think John Samos is supposed to play the good looking character. <laughs> he's funny, but I think he's... Always yeah, the playboy. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's that. it doesn't come off as authentic, so therefore I don't like it as much. Like he has his one line from Full House, I have yeah. mercy. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It's those one liners <laughs> that are written for him, and he, of course it's funny because he's got the top comedic writers writing for him in the world, mm -hmm. but yeah, you can see it's not authentic. Yeah, because even in the past, like going from breaking in between from like Full House and Grandfather, mm -hmm. you don't really see John Stamos doing a lot of funny stuff. It's no. always like the very suave, character oh. always coming in he was guest starring in like really like lawyer shows and yes yeah, for you and she I, I'm yeah. like broad and she's like hey let me give you the actual I was like I loved his SVU episode because uh -huh. I actually found it hysterical because his character was just such a douche because <laughs> have you always been into TV like have you always been like a TV junkie and yeah, yeah, yeah pop culture junkie I'm like Abed on community <laughs> she's so <laughs> good <laughs> I only seen a few episodes of Community, so can't really fully laugh at that mm. one. But holla to Donald Glover. Love ha him. Hashtag six seasons in a movie. Challenge can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, the boom. jam. The jam. But what were you guys' mm. favorite? Just kind of jumping into a random one. What were you guys' favorite quotes in this episode? Because there was a lot of oh, funny yeah. one-liners in this one. There was. Uh, mm -hmm. My favorite quote, because last time I remember I had, I had that massive my Oprah quote, <laughs> which I love. You took a quote that we didn't even think was going to be deep at all. I just went with I it. Know. I love it. Uh -huh. um, Favorite quote? I don't actually have. Do you know what's funny? I actually don't write things down mm -hmm. because I believe if it's good enough, I'll remember it. Oh. And there wasn't a particular quote that I remembered. Really? So that means there wasn't. I mean, great episode, but I don't think mm -hmm. there was a standalone quote that was Not so too good. Funny. Oh, I would have remembered it. Yeah. So. Yeah, for me, there were like several good little moments. Actually, almost for every character, like Lizzie, when she said the universe wanted her to have a character building experience. I love that. <laughs> and then um, when Todd is uh, pretending Stu is Dean, um, and he's like, "Well, Dean would have come up with a backstory," <laughs> like because he's just like asking all these questions. He's like, "I don't know, you do it." <laughs> And then the, um, you know, this sounds like a TV show. Real law is boring. It's paperwork, jury selection, blah, blah, blah. You're trying to make it sexy. Don't worry. I've been there. <laughs> like, do you have a lot word. of lines? Uh -huh. yeah. My favorite was when he was just like, I'm not a lawyer. <clears throat> yes. Because suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, after, what, 15 episodes, he's finally come to his senses. He's got this mm -hmm. thing. So I was busting up at the irony with that. And even the... Um, what you wanted me to get a cab for her? Jillian's not yeah. some skank. skank. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like yeah. that. And then when he was like, "Did you hear that? That was a wall coming down." Ooh, what was kind of always the acting reference? Yes, yeah, he's just yes. super dramatic. <laughs> What was kind of interesting though, because mm -hmm. it's true, because the therapist was saying one thing about um, Stuart, Stewie, mm -hmm. was that he's insecure, mm -hmm. and I think he would be. Oh, uh, he is definitely. Totally, yeah. having a brother that was a superstar, and then him as a lawyer. It's so funny because people can be lawyers or doctors. But for whatever reason, they they people put fame on a different platform. Oh, I was at a, like a pre Grammys party, I think last week mm. or the weekend before, and there was this top eye surgeon there in the world. And my friend is very high up at Access Hollywood, and he gave her free LASIK eye surgery so he could be on the Access Hollywood show. And oh. I was like, you could just see he just wanted it. Like he thought that was so cool uh -huh. to be known. It's like you are one of the world's best. I, like I'm we're, like we're just dumbass hosts. Like <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, you do have to you know, like, uh -huh. have some sort of talent. Yeah. But like I couldn't. Like you are the, one of the world's best surgeons. Like we look at you as accomplished, and he just wants uh -huh. to be on a trashy entertainment talk show. I like, paid yeah. three thousand dollars for my LASIK, and I could have just gotten it for free. And yeah. Just yeah. yeah. Just years. Yeah. A big company, and then so, interviewed yeah. a bunch of surgeons. You know. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. That's weird. How. Because it's true, like, we do emphasize the Grammys and, like, Emmys and all these things, but all these 
big award shows that everyone gets together to watch, they're all centered around one specific industry. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, I mean, you wouldn't watch like a doctor surgeon award show for like best best surgery of the year you know yeah, like too, yeah. number See one Dr. hospital ben in Carson. los angeles uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. exactly uh-huh poor guy so, so awkward yeah, thank really god he's is. out of that race <laughs> yes absolutely and what were you predicting because you see i feel like you've got uh-huh. quite a few predictions i do have a few I, like my mind is definitely so oh oh yeah. oh boom baby boom I always feel like I'm just gonna be like transparent. Can you do that? No, no. I feel what? like you would know that, like, you know, the Sasa sa song by Paris Hilton, like, sa 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 s
that kid? Um, mm. No, I did a radio show and no one listened, so mm. I used to get my friends to call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in to no. be people. Well, and, at least we got, yeah. we got one coming in from that. And also we have some awesome, just for a little bit of news, but we don't got to play the music or anything, we have some awesome guest stars coming up. We have Ooh. Jenna Fisher from Ooh. The Office, oh, yeah. who Love. is hilarious, and Caroline, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Caroline Ray from yes. Sabrina the Teenage mm-hmm. Witch. Uh-huh. Ah, which one's I'm that? I'm sure she's in a lot of other stuff, but yeah. that's what I remember her from. She plays one of the ants. Which one, the, the, yeah. the fatter one or the skinnier one? The chubbier one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, she's funny. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. Camille. Love her. No, she's so funny. But that, yeah, they're going to be so funny, and I can't wait to see them on there. Because how many episodes do we have left? We of- have about four, six. That's a big number. I think. Oh. About six episodes okay, left. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're getting picked out for season mm-hmm. two, I reckon. Oh, definitely. Feel it in me waters. It's just escalating more and more and more. But that's all we have for you guys this week. Thanks for tuning in. You can find me on Twitter at In Less Than No Time. Let us know in the comments and watch it. You know what you'd like to see for next week. If you want to see more of Dan as the lead host, because we all know that was hilarious. <laughs> and Steven will be back next week with us. He was a little under the weather, so maybe send him some get well tweets out there on Twitter. Once again, you can find me on Twitter at In Less Than No Time. And you can find me, if you can spell it, at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N, because there's only one. What was that second letter? <laughs> I just, just missed that. Well, you can find me on Instagram, at Dan Babic, and I'm feeling extra hosty right now. I don't know <laughs> why, so I'm going to keep it up. And find me on Twitter, at Dan Babic with an underscore. That's it, guys. Yeah. Yes. See you later. See you later. Bye. 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 From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. Buzz you later. Later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 